Express's route files are at the core of how the web server works. Basically, when the server receives an HTTP request, get, post, etc., it goes, hey, I should do stuff, and looks to see if there's a route that tells it what to do when evaluating the request. This route does not have to be a separate file. You could code it right into app.js if you want, leading to a single file web server that's potentially thousands of lines long. You could also take a claw hammer and just wail it down on your legs and groin repeatedly, and while I have no power to stop you, I can definitely state without compunction that doing so is a bad idea. So we have separate route files. The way most people tend to organize Express, if they're keeping things simple, is one file per top level directory. So you might have the following. That's four URLs, but only three routes because our news route is going to handle not only the index, but also individual items. Similarly, that contact route would handle a GET request to show the contact page, and a POST request when submitting the contact form. It might also handle another GET to something like slash contact slash thanks in order to forward them to a thanks page. Let's take a look at the two routes Express has generated for us. There's an index route and a user's route. The files are imported up near the top with these lines of code. We assign them to specific URLs later, here. Let's take a look at that index router first. Go ahead and open up slash routes slash index.js. It's a pretty simple file, just 10 lines long, and two of those are blank. The first two lines import express and then create a router variable for us to work with. You'll do this same thing at the top of any additional router files you create, at least if you want them to work. The next block is helpfully commented to explain exactly what it does. It looks for get request to slash and then responds with a view. More on views next week, but for now you might be wondering about why we have to set slash in app.js and in slash routes slash index.js. Well, as I mentioned before, router files can handle get requests to multiple URLs. So that slash in app.js would catch the top level, but also something like slash blah if that URL isn't assigned to any other router. Now that doesn't mean slash blah will work. We don't have anything set up for it in our router file, so it's still going to fall through to the 404 catcher. Let's take a quick look at the actual get code. So what's this saying? Basically, when the top level is requested via get, run a function that takes three variables. rec is the request, res is the response Express is building, and next is the built-in function that cycles through middleware. We're not using next here, nor are we doing anything with the request itself, but we do need to send a response. We do that with Express's built-in res.render method, which tells our web server to render a view. Again, we'll cover views in the next tutorial, but it just means render the associated EGS file and provide data to it. In this case, that data is an object which contains a title property and value. So that's how we render views. What else can we do with res? Well, let's open up slash routes slash users.js and look at our almost identical code. As you can see, it's using res.send instead of res.render, which means it's not working with any views. It's just sending plain text. That's boring, so let's add a route that sends JSON. Do not replace the index route. It won't stop this code from functioning, but A, it'll break the index route, and B, the point is to show that these files can handle multiple requests. Here's the code. There's two things to note here. The first is that slash colon ID. This is basically how we tell Express to evaluate the URL and take parameters from it. Basically that ID, which we could call whatever we want, becomes an available variable for us to work with. We access that variable through the rec.params property, as you can see in our console log line. After that, we create a user object. In the real world, we'd use the ID parameter to look up info from a database. Then we send that object back as JSON, which res.json helpfully does for us without us having to use json.stringify. Go ahead and save the file. And then restart your server. If you were running Nodemon, it would have restarted automatically, but I wasn't at the time. You can now navigate to localhost port 3000 slash users slash 1234, and you'll see our JSON. If you check your console right here, You'll also see that your log showed up. The ID is 1234. Cool. So now we understand how to use routes to handle GET requests. 
We're going to cover post next week by creating two views, one with a form, and one to send a user to after they submit the form. We'll also, of course, talk about how those views work. See you there.